Hey guys, Nightfall here, coming with another guide to Mythic Plus. So this one's going to be Black Rook Hold. I guess our group is sort of known for doing some Black Rook Holds. It's mostly Jason. So, before you start this key, you're going to want to decide where you need Lust. And by that, I mean, do you need Lust on the second boss? That is it. If you need Lust to get down the second boss, that's going to determine exactly what you do for the first 10 to 15 minutes of this instance. If you need Lust on the second boss, that means you're using it on the first boss. If not, hold it, and you'll see what we're gonna do with Lust when you don't need it on the second boss. Now, to start this instance, you're going to want to decide how you're skipping the first set of trash, because it is absolutely a waste of time to do any of the first trash before the first boss. It has way too much health, damage, all that, and it'll put you over percent no matter what path you take. It is not worth a second to even start attacking the trash here. So I'm gonna go through the different ways you can skip it from worst to best. So the worst way to skip this trash, in my opinion, is to have everyone in Vizpot. You're putting all your potions on cooldown for 10 minutes. There's gonna be some crazy pulls later on, especially if you're not using Lust on the first boss. So you want your potions up. Next worst way would be to have just your healer in Viz. Your healer can do that. Healer can invis just fine. Have everyone else die, and your healer will just mass res people on the other side. Next best way after that is to have everyone die, but have your healer make it through and die on a pylon. That's what we would typically do. Have our healer go through, die on a pylon. The best way to do it only works if you have a rogue. If you have a rogue, your rogue can go ahead and stealth all of your people through. Now that one's particularly difficult to do though, because the stealth for the whole group, the shroud, lasts exactly long enough to get everyone through. So if you screw it up at all, or accidentally touch one of the character models for one of these enemies, you're gonna get everyone killed. So that could just backfire on you pretty bad, but if you practice it, it is the best way to do it, provided you have a rogue. If you don't have a rogue, have everyone run through, have your healer die on a pylon, get mass res like we do here. Quick note, not worth eating unless you have a fish feast before the first boss because it increases your damage by approximately 1%, but sitting and waiting 10 seconds? 10 seconds is longer than 1% of the boss, so it's going to save you less than 10 seconds on the boss to sit down and eat for 10 seconds. Now the optimal setup for this is to have a druid in your group. You really want to have a druid in your group, particularly for this boss. Now druids have great survivability for this whole instance, great damage for this whole instance, but... You really want it on this first boss, because on this first boss, when he reaches 50%, he sends out seven ghosts. Not eight, seven. It'll be three sets of two, and one solo ghost. What you want to have happen is you want to have your druid go ahead and root that solo add. And what will happen is the boss will start to do what is an achievement. It's an achievement for the glory of the hero, and he'll just sit there, and when he does his 50% channel, He's just going to keep channeling. He's not going to do anything else. He's going to sit there and he's going to channel all the way till 15%. When he hits 15%, he's going to go ahead and he's going to do his detonate. When that happens, you're obviously going to want to have your defensives up. The higher the key, the more defensives you'll need. You might even need pride as. You might want to consider having certain slows, certain knockbacks and all that for the ghosts, because obviously you don't want any getting in, especially on high keys. If you're doing like a 26, 27, 28, if any get in, Anyone without an immunity is just getting one shot, regardless of what you have. So you really need to make sure none get in. But what doing that root strategy does is because from 50% to 15%, he's going to sit there and do absolutely nothing. You can have everyone go full bore into the boss, including your healer. Your healer can just go whale on the boss for like one to two million DPS, depending on their class and depending on what gear they have. And that is huge. That'll shave like a minute off of the boss or more. So you're seeing I'm using the slow ring on this, but you don't necessarily need someone with like a permanent slow as long as you have some knockbacks and stuns. It was really overkill for this. But you can see back there is the root. And he's just going to sit here and he's going to channel all the way down till he's at 15% health. We're going to use our defensives and we're just going to finish off the boss. No mechanics whatsoever. Skipping ahead to the end of the boss. Now's your time to eat if you want to eat some food that takes 10 seconds to eat. You got your RP here that lasts about 15 seconds. But overall, you don't want to eat until this point, and you don't want to eat any other time throughout the instance unless you're eating a fish feast. So climbing your way up to the top, 
If it's bolstering or bursting, you may want to go a little slow on the spiders, keep them away from the big spider. But once you get up here, you're going to want to take that big spider, and you're going to want to pull that big spider all the way up to meet the patrol. And you're going to want to kill it with a patrol because you get that three target cleave way better than sitting on one target. And on top of that, you don't want to pull the patrol into the next pack most of the time because then you'll have two champions, two champions, two shouts, tons of extra health. Not Coming up here is where it's going to get a little crazy. This is why you probably want to save Lust unless you absolutely need it for the next boss. Because what you're going to do up here is you're going to go crazy. So what we do is we CC that champion so he can't shout and we pull everything up here. All our range stand at 40 yards and if we have Lust, we pop Lust here. Now the previous pack, I didn't show it, but we just stood in the doorway while he tanked it where it was. But here, if you have Lust, pop Lust and stay 40 yards. Now we screw this up horribly, the start's going okay, but then we get out of position, people start getting hit by arrows, arrow barrage, and we have a near wipe. Luckily we did get through this and did end up timing this key, but this is when we were first starting to figure out exactly what we wanted to do with these packs. This was probably the second or third time we'd tried something like this. So when you do this, what I would recommend is when they get to about 20% health, you're going to want to break that champion and allow him to shout. Now, if you're far enough away, you probably won't get the shout on any of them. And worst case scenario, with a 20% health and they get a shout on them, what's going to happen is they're going to go up to, you know, what's equal to 40% health. That's not that much, you know, and that way he doesn't shout along with whatever commander, whatever his name is that jumped down, commander, Shama, whatever, who jumps down. You don't want the double shout, so this will stagger your shouts because as soon as this pack dies, as soon as the backpack dies, everything that was in that backpack, all the way in the back, you're going to go ahead and have those guys jump down and join the fight, whether you like it or not. But just, if you have lust, use it here. If you need lust for the second boss, save it for the second boss. Overall, you definitely wanna to try to do this pull if you can. If you can't, you can't. But just remember, if you're range DPS, stand at 40 yards because every ability here has a maximum range of 30 or 35 yards. So if you're at 40 plus yards, you're going to take zero damage. You're not gonna get shot, you're not gonna get arrow barrage, you're not gonna get knife dance, and you're not gonna get leapt on by the cat, which are the huge things. Those are the things that'll one or two shot you, especially if you're clothy like me. Even if you're not a clothy, you could be a boomkin in bear form. You can get straight up marked by this. Like I got killed because I got a little greedy, got a little too close to the archer. I thought, hey, the archer's almost dead. And now I have to release and run back and they have to do the start of the big pack that jumps down with the commander without me because he just jumped down now skipping ahead to the second boss you have lust use lust even if you uh, used it somewhere else didn't use it on the first boss if it came up for some reason maybe you wiped or something definitely use it on the second boss because this boss is the entire instance basically if you wipe on this boss you're probably gonna fail if you don't wipe on this boss you probably got the instance now you can see I was bopped there. If you have a paladin, you can bop someone and they won't even charge it. Now you can see we're not taking it to the walls. A lot of people still take it to the walls, but the meta right now that a lot of people are starting to use and we were using, this was filmed back in December, was when it was first coming out, was a triangle around the feet. Someone stands in front of her, someone stands to the back left, someone stands to the back right, call out what you're getting. Now, as you can see, we just figured out that this was right around the time they made it so Paralyzed no longer works on the Vanguard, so we didn't CC the Vanguard. You can still root him, so if you have a Druid, just like you wanted on the first boss, the Druid can go all the way up there, stand next to the candles, force themselves up against the railing, and just barely get sight on that guy and go ahead and root him in place so you don't have to deal with him. The problem is the Druid will have to continuously go up there and try to root it, and if he's being chased by this eye beam when he has to reroute, you're not going to get the reroute, and then you're going to have a full health champion jumping in when you have the boss already down on the ground. You really want to be careful with that champion. That champion, his stun typically will line up with her charge. So if she's charging people dropping fire and he stuns them in the fire, they are absolutely 100% dead. There's bone breaking strike. So even if you're not the tank, you have to be watching that. And as you can see, we're calling different areas. I tend to go to the back left. And see, you got your little triangle, move out as quickly as possible. I can use a teleport because I'm a warlock. I even pop the defensive there just to be safe. And definitely stay spread out because you see that glaive? That wide arc, it'll bounce so far. It'll bounce unbelievably far. So you really need to be spread out on this boss because if that glaive hits more than one person, especially on higher keys, really on higher keys, 
your healer is going to be 100% overwhelmed. They will fall behind so far, especially if it's Grievous Week. They will fall so far behind and people will just drop, especially during the charges, because you always take damage to the charge. And if you stand too still during the charge, it ticks really fast, the fire under your feet, it'll just flat out kill you. Especially if you have Glaive on you, especially if your healer is falling behind, especially if you have Grievous, you are going to be absolutely murked by that. You are going to be 100% dead, 100% wipe. And if you wipe on this, lower key, you can come back, get it done, even if you wasted lust. But on higher keys, you wipe on this boss, key's over, you're done. You might as well just drop it, try it on a lower level. The trash after the second boss, I actually find it sort of interesting, although annoying. It is the only trash that absolutely sucks on Sanguine. Every other trash pack, in every other instance, you're like, oh, Sanguine Week, free week. Here it's like, Sanguine Week, oh god, why are we in black or cold? Because these guys, not the tricksters, but the scavengers, they will go ahead and they will just stand still casting indefinitely. There is no end to their cast. They just keep casting, keep repeating the cast over and over, and they'll stand in Sanguine and heal themselves up to full, especially because there's so many of them. So we have like 10 stacks of Sanguine. Cast for two seconds, boom, full health. You're done. You just wasted all your damage. So we're going a little big on this. We usually go pretty big on this. We're going not quite as big because we killed those first four. We didn't want totally too much Sanguine, but we have a little method here. I should be using Slow Ring as a Warlock. You're going to want to slow on these if you're doing the Mega Pull. Now, decide with your group what you're comfortable with. Are you comfortable with doing a Mega Pull like we're doing here, where we pull almost everything? And the Super Mega Pull is where you pull everything. You literally just pull from those Tricksters to those guys back, and then you just kite it all the way back as far as you need to go. And you can actually have your tank run through, up the stairs, jump over the stairs, and run back through this doorway. That's a good way to go ahead and kite it. We have him just go ahead and teleport back because he's a monk and he also will sometimes take ring of peace but it doesn't matter what class your tank is as long as they can get through fast especially with the sky step potion they can get through really fast jump over the top of those stairs land back here and just keep kiting and see this is the problem with sanguine they'll just sit there indigestion the entire time and also on a high fortified standing in indigestion you saw i think waffle got hit by one tick and it took him to like 10 percent health or something as a druid, which is kind of insane. I mean, if it hits me, it's probably going to take me to about 10%. And I've got absorbs out the ass, so you really don't want to get hit by it on higher keys. And those spinners are annoying. You can't get them to retarget. You can stun them, you can fear them, but they're just going to go right back to spinning. So, I mean, it'll give you a few seconds to get away from them, but nothing you can really do about it. And also, to save your tank, anytime you see a Blade Lord starting to cast Brutal Assault, that'll hit the tank as long as the tank is within, like, 40, 30, 40 yards of them, it'll hit the tank from a distance. And it absolutely destroys. Like, I have an alt tank who's decently geared. I did a 9. A plus 9, and I got nearly got killed by one of those brutal assaults, and I vastly outgeared on that tank alt. It absolutely wrecks. So just stun it as soon as the channel starts. Not while the cast is going, because if you do it during the cast, stun or fear during the cast, he's just going to recast. But if you get it while it's just starting to channel, It'll stop the channel, won't recast, you'll save your tank's life. Now coming up here to the Felspite Dominators and all the bats, you're going to want to decide how many we're pulling at once. Are we doing one, are we doing three, or are we doing all six, like you see here. All six are coming down the stairs. Now if you do all six, your tank's going to have to kite. Once they start buffing themselves, there is no tank doing an appropriate level key that can sit there and take the melee hits from those guys all six of them so you're gonna have to kite you know perma slow if you're gonna kite it doesn't matter what class does the slows obviously you can see i'm the one doing it for this group but you're gonna want those slows you're gonna want the stuns interrupt if you can beam them if you can or whatever try and keep them from getting too buffed in case one of them actually does hit your tank important note if you're ever running from these guys for your life do not ever go down the stairs these guys have a near infinite z-axis up down hit so if you're one yard to the side, but like two floors below them, they'll hit you straight through the floor and one shot you. So what you're gonna wanna do is you just gotta keep going around the circle and around the circle. Or conversely, you can have your entire group run all the way up the stairs and you can go up into the third boss room and go left to right at the entrance of the boss room. Just be careful you don't pull the boss and just go back and forth and back and forth. But your tank's gonna have to be good about avoiding them when going back and forth, because if he runs through them to get to the other side, he's gonna get melee by all six 
fully 10 stack buff dominators and get one shot. So you're gonna have to be really careful. Obviously you want slows for the bats, the sick bats. If you're a melee and you get sick bats on you, good luck, you're dead, whatever. You, there's nothing you can do about it. It just sucks. It just sucks to be a melee anywhere in this instance. It just sucks to be a melee. So there's nothing you can do about that. But if you're a ranged DPS and the bats are slowed, if you're standing at max range, you can get away from the bats. Now coming up on this third boss, this guy can get really scary, especially on high tyrannical keys, because that ground stomp he does comes out more often than your pride as will refresh. I still recommend a pride as on this. And also on top of that, it'll do so, so much damage. It can flat out one shot you. Like on this 26, it'll chunk me for pretty much my whole health. On like a 26 tyrannical, it'll do like eight, nine million easily. Easily do eight or nine million. And I believe in this recording, I'm also wearing 20% avoidance gear. Avoidance really, really helps on it. And you're going to want to have your tank soak as many of these charges as possible. Most tanks can't soak all of them. Monks, a very skilled monk, can usually get all of them, but not all the time. There'll be times where they get bad luck, bad RNG, and they just can't soak all of them. So you're going to need to have someone back up, you're going to need to have someone with immunities because especially on high keys or high tyrannicals especially, there's no defenses that's going to save you. 40% damage reduction won't save you. And there's immediate stomp right after, so even if you do pop a defensive, that'll save you. Unless you're instantly topped by your healer. Instantly topped, the slam's going to get you. So I recommend Pride as Avoidance Gear and definitely have tank or immunity players ready to soak every single one no matter how long the fight goes if you have lust up definitely lust here you don't need lust for last boss it makes your meters look good if you lost on the last boss because you got the damage bonus but you really really much much prefer it here you definitely need to and as you can see we're doing as best as we can with the lines currently on live they do seem to be bugged i've only done about three black or cold since i've been back from being in the hospital and all that and i really haven't seen these lines function properly in any of those keys that I've done. Granted, I've only done three, but still. Uh, these lines right now, they seem to only be going about five yards out of the bat's face and not actually connecting with the player. So you have to look into the distance and see, hey, I think that's the bat that's targeting me because I see a little green coming out of its face. And you really want to do a little better than we did with that one line going across. But luckily, as a warlock, I can help people get across, which is something I'll cover more in the warlock addition to this in the next video. So after the third boss, you're gonna have to make a decision. How crazy do you wanna get with this final set of trash? And don't forget, I forgot to mention before, but when you're going through the area below this before the Felspite Dominators, be sure to get the two guys, the dog and the little dude, patrolling in the side room. You need that for the percentage. But you can decide, do you wanna go two pack, two pack, two pack, three pack, three pack, because there's six packs between you and the next boss, or do you wanna do what we did and have the tank run through everything, you know, port back, I'm retarded and I stood in that little uh, volcano there and died. That's not a good sign for someone who's trying to put together a guide. But you're going to pull all these guys maybe and kite them around. Now it's not great on bolstering because all these lances are going to leap out and on bolstering they'll just get bolstered out there because they're not going to take as much damage. But this is Sanguine Volcanic Fortified in this video. So you're going to see that we just AOE them all down. They get a little spread out, there's nothing you can do, and be careful not to stand near Sanguine, because if they leap, they'll land in Sanguine. Don't steer, uh, don't steer, don't stand near the boss's corpse, because it's really hard to see that swirl from a leaping lancer when you're standing on the boss's corpse. And if one of these guys lands on you on a high fortified key, you're getting killed. And even on a low fortified key, if you get stunned for like five seconds, Another one can leap on top of you and then kill you. So these guys are deceptively dangerous. But overall, I prefer pulling everything. If your group can't do it, your group can't do it. Don't worry about it. Do 2-2-2 two, 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 or 3-3 three, three, and get your way through. If you're doing 2-2-2 two, 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 or 3-3-3, three, 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 you're going to just go pull them where they are rather than pulling them back into this big open area. This is just how our group prefers to do it. You can do it however you like. We just need this space when we have this many Lancers. When you have six Lancers, you want as much space as possible, especially with all this Sanguine dropping everywhere. Coming up on the last boss is the end of the instance. You should be at 100%, or if you have a Blood Death Knight, they may have taken a pet, which would put you around 99%. That's all right. Just make sure you count that into your percentage. 
Now on this last boss, if you're gonna have lust because you used it at least 10 minutes 40 seconds on the timer, that's great. If you don't have lust, you don't have lust. It was more important to use it on the second boss and the third boss and things like that. But with this guy, he is going to absolutely wreck your tank regardless of whether it's tyrannical or not. He is absolutely going to wreck your tank. He stacks a permanent debuff on them. Now, once they get the health bonus, that permanent debuff is going to tick for nothing. But if they have it and they don't have the health buff yet, they are going to get absolutely wrecked. A quick note, if you have a paladin, you can bop it off once this guy is during this RP that you see right now. If you toss a bop on the tank, it immediately removes all those. He can click off the bop so the boss, when it comes up, doesn't start attacking random players but it'll just immediately remove the stacks of the debuff. Now here, again, I would recommend defensive gear, especially pride as you don't necessarily need avoidance. I believe avoidance affects this, although I haven't taken the time to really test it. Logically, it makes sense. This is an AOE attack, so it should be affected by avoidance. We've never actually gone and tested it as far as I know. I certainly haven't. And right there, you can see, I just went full defensive for that. Now these stinging swarms on high keys or on tyrannical are absolutely going to destroy everyone. They're going to annihilate. They're going to tick on, especially on cloth like myself, they'll tick for like 8 million on high keys, maybe more. And with the health bonus, you know, I might have 30 million. So something ticking for a third of my health while he's launching shadow bolts, really deadly, really, really deadly. Now, if you have lust, you're not going to want to use it when he first comes up because he goes down pretty quick. But if you do have Lust, you're going to want to use it right after he comes up from Dreadlord's Guile. And obviously keep your group together if you have something like Roar, if you have a Druid tank or something, or if you have your personal speed increases, definitely use them there and be very careful. Take a second during those beams to figure out, as long as you're not in the center of beam, take a second to figure out is it going clockwise or counterclockwise because you don't want to run, run the wrong direction. If you run the wrong direction, you might not have time to turn around and get out of it. Now, obviously, big defensive on the swarm. I'm a clothy. I am going to get absolutely annihilated by this. It nearly kills me there. Like a single tick, plus a little extra from the boss, nearly took me down to like 40% health with full defensives up. So it is absolutely <laughs> imperative that you do whatever you can to survive this. We're getting lucky it's going on the druid who can spare form it. It's better if it just goes on the tank though. If it goes on the tank, you have life so easy, especially monk tank. Monk tank, if it goes on a monk tank, it'll actually heal the tank rather than hurt the tank. It'll heal the tank because I don't know exactly how they work, but Jason speaks a lot about orbs. So whatever those are, it causes him to get a lot of whatever orbs are for monks. I don't know. I don't play monk, but that actually just makes it so that he heals. And you can obviously, like you saw there, you can use something like Divine Shield or Bop to just drop it. I've done that on my Paladin and I've had other people do it. And right there, Masset just went ahead and he bopped himself. Stinging Swarm falls right off. Nothing happens. And if it goes on something like a Mage, something like a Priest, uh, get your Battle Res ready. Because unless they have something, you know, like a Mage might have Ice Block up, if they don't have Ice Block up, uh, they're dead. <laughs> there are several other classes like Hunter if they don't have Turtle. Oh, I got Swarm right as it was going down. If a Hunter doesn't have Turtle, you might be attending that Hunter's funeral. Because there are certain classes on these high keys, especially on Tyrannical, where they're just not going to survive. If they don't have their defensive, they're just not going to survive. Your healer can bomb them as hard as you can. But if they get that, especially when a Shadow Bow Volley's coming out, you are absolutely going to watch them die. Like, I nearly died right there. It is absolutely destroying me. I wish I could get into melee to get the ignite on it. We don't have any melee to cleave onto it. We can see everyone nearly died there, and it's partially my fault. I should have been closer in, so the healer could have focused me better, could have focused down better, and the healer could have focused more on keeping everyone else alive, because look how low they're dipping. Like, we lost Masset right there. But the boss is so close to dead, we just finished him up instead of resing him. This boss is the second, no, third worst part. Second worst part is the third boss, but this guy, if you have Lust, if you have defensive gear, and if you have enough time, he's gonna fall. You don't need Lust even to kill him. Lust is just gonna make you look good. Now you can tell this is an old one and not a more recent one, and I'm definitely in defensive gear because I only did, what is that? 3.7 on him or something? Nowadays, I probably do about 6 million with the gear I have now and with non-defensive gear. So you're gonna annihilate him. 
you don't need to worry too much. It's all about keeping yourselves alive from staying swarm. And that's really it for Blackbrook Holds. Again, don't forget to pull those two mobs in the side room. I totally forgot to mention that earlier, but remember, you need that for percentage. You might not need it on teaming. I'll have to double check that. But for now, that's all. Take care, guys.